everyone. My name is Dr. Wei Dai. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science at the Southeast Missouri State University. Today, I will introduce a web-based simulation tool helps students to learn the computer operating system course. I will brief the simulation, how to access the simulation, and uh, what the feedback came from students. Two students will introduce how to use the simulation. A computer operating system, OS for short, is a system software running on hardware. It controls resource of hardware and software and offers common service for computer programs. The OS is invisible technology. So they will control the CPU resource, RAM, memory resource, uh, IO resource, and uh, network resource. The web-based simulation helps students learn OS algorithms in anywhere and anytime. Until now, the simulation has been clicked almost 50 5,000 times. To the best of our knowledge, uh, knowledge, this is the, to the best of our knowledge, this is the first um, multi web-based simulation that offers multiple operating system algorithms, including four CPU scheduling algorithms, four memory page replacement algorithms, and the three disk ARM algorithms and the two deadlock detection algorithms. Next page. Visitors access from 30 countries spanning 84 cities. Although most of the visitors um, came from the USA, most of foreign users came from the Singapore, German, Japanese, Indonesia, Egypt, etc. So I used the red. Uh, flag shoes. The simulation encourages student center learning by allowing students to generate the countless examples with animations. This in turn improves learning, reduce misunderstanding, and enhance enhancing teaching efficiency. Nineteen eight. Percent of people like the simulation, and uh, almost 19% of people would introduce the simulation tool to other students. Next page. So, I'm going to take this time now to demonstrate uh, how the operating algorithm simulations work. Uh, as you can see when you load up the page, you have four different options. They all function on a sort of snap response where um, you simply put in the data and it loads um, what the uh, diagram for that would look like. The diagrams that we generate here are very similar to what a student would receive on a homework assignment, on a quiz, on any sort of review. Uh, so this tool is really good for review for students as well as um, verification of those sorts of homework assignments to make sure that they're on the right track, they're doing things right, uh, and those sorts of things. Um, I'll start by demonstrating the CPU scheduling algorithm here. Uh, as you can see, when I first load into it, it populates uh, two processes with arrival times, execution times, and uh, priority values. Um, now, if I'm ever confused on what these are, if they aren't loading in properly, I can, get, I can always hover over things for more information. Uh, here, I can hover over and see process zero. Um, if I wanted to change the jobs, I can do that and click generate new table. This will make a larger table with more processes um, and um, load in exactly what I want. Uh, now let's say I want to go in, I want to test a process with a larger value, maybe something like 26, uh, maybe a smaller one here with a 2, um, and I can even throw in some middle values there. Um, I'll leave the priority values alone because I'm not going to be using a priority scheduling system. I'm going to be using what is the shortest job first. Um, I am going to ignore the quantum and I'm going to hit generate table. What this will do is it'll populate a result table down here. 
Um, and as you can see, it does the shortest job first, size 2, then 7, then 10, then 26, uh, for a total runtime of 45 seconds, milliseconds, units of time. Um, and I can see here, hover over process for more information. If I want to see anything more on this, I can hover over. Uh, I can see for this process zero, uh, it's, it was serviced at nine, at nine seconds, nine units, uh, which would be the, after these first two processes run. And it had an end time of 19, which would be when this one starts. Um, it's a really useful tool um, for walking through those sorts of things. But let's say uh, I don't really understand what's going on here. I need a little bit more of a walkthrough with this. Uh, I've included a manual on this page um, that people can reference. Uh, this one here talks about uh, a little bit about how the uh, simulator functions and why it functions the way it does and walks through uh, some of the different terms that I use. And then down here explains um, how to use the simulator um, step by step. Uh, another really cool thing about these web simulators is the inclusion of Google Translate. Um, here, if I would if I would like to change this to a different language, I can select whatever language I would like to change it to. I'll change it to German, and you can see it updates all um, words on the page and translates them to German. Uh, this is a really useful tool, uh, especially as you saw from that map uh, when the pandemic struck and a lot of our international students had to return home. Um, we saw a spike in access to this page from um, those places or from those uh, places that were not the United States. And so the School of Translate tool is a really uh, good tool, really useful tool for international students who may not understand a lot of the technical jargon in English and may be more familiar with it in a more native language. Um, so yeah, that's how the web uh, simulators function. Um, they all sort of function in the similar manner. Um, they all look a little bit different, but they all have the same sort of layout, uh, which was really good for the standardization there. Uh, but thank you. For the animation version, there are two simulations. The first one is the CPU scheduling simulations. The second one is the memory page replacement simulations. Let's take a look of the memory page replacement algorithm first. The left side is where you put input. The right side is the output. First, let we choose the setting the chance. We input uh, the number of the page frames and we input some page reference. We can use the random value. And we click go. The top part would show which algorithm is running and the hit rate and the force rate and they would dynamic change during the process that we create the first thing first out and it change first thing first out. And then it's a step-by-step -step part. It would show the reference and the catch set. If we change the catch sets, there's a one more frame. And we click forward. It would show how the catch, the memory page replacement, step-by-step. -step. If there's a hit, it would mark it with a blue color and it would show hit. And if there's a discard, it would show the discard. And on the top, the hit rate and the fault rate would change dynamically in the different step. You can also go backward. And there's a show out to show all the results. For the CPU scheduling algorithms, like there are also the left side is the input and the right side would be the output. And we choose like the short job first and input the job number, input the execution time, and the priority value. And the quantum is for the round robin algorithms. And we let go. The top part would be the name. And this would show the process, arrival time, execution time, and the priority value with the traditional like text version. And under there, there are animation version. That those colorful bars would help to demonstrate how the size and the time take place in the CPU scheduling. And with uh, such great number like 31, it would use a bigger bar. With small number like 4, it would use a small bar. Thanks for watching.